Hey, it's Kevin Tofel with GigaOM, and I have been having such a blast using the Samsung Chromebook for the past several days. Now, I bought this on Amazon. It was $449. This is the new Chromebook Series 5, model number 550, so it's an upgrade over last year's version, and I can't put it down. And I know these are not for everybody because really this is, it looks like a small notebook netbook that maybe runs a desktop operating system. It runs Chrome OS, so you're basically in a browser. That's it. If you're into the Google apps and things, perfect for you. If you have light computing needs, perfect for you. You know, it's not for everybody. I'm not going to say that it is. I'm not going to suggest that it's the future of computing, but it's a future of computing, and I think it's worth looking into. So let me take you around the hardware, talk about this, and then show off a little bit of what it can do and why I've been having so much fun with it. Um, the device is 3.3 pounds, comes with 4 gig of RAM, an Intel Celeron dual-core processor, um, Intel 3000 HD graphics, which I think are the same as my old 2010 MacBook Air, actually. Um, so you're getting some decent hardware in here, and it's been quite peppy in terms of performance. It should be. It's a lightweight operating system with a browser. It's running Linux with Chrome on top of that. So, um, again, 3.3 pounds. The battery is rated, rated for about six hours of continuous use, and that's about what I've been finding. I'm constantly connected to Wi-Fi because um, really can't do much without it here. So let's see, on the right-hand side, I can show you there's a Kensington lock here. There is a USB 2.0 port, and there is a 4-in-1 card reader here for micro SD, SD cards, and so on. Front side, there's nothing there. Left side, we've got the power port goes here. We've got, this is really neat. This is a, an Ethernet uh, connection for wired internet. The last version didn't have that, and for a small device, you typically wouldn't, but you know what? They have that funky little door there that opens it up and still doesn't detract from the overall thinness. Not that it's the thinnest thing, but it's still pretty thin. Um, you've also got a uh, DisplayPort++ port, which I think is HDMI and VGA and DVI all together somehow. Uh, some of those will require an, an adapter. And then we've got another USB 2.0 port and the microphone headphone port here. Nothing on the back. I'll show you the underneath. We've got two vents here, here and here, for letting some steam out. And back here, there's actually a fan in here, and the hot air will blow right out of here out the back. Fan hasn't been on all that much when I'm doing graphic intensive stuff, okay. Um, that happens on some of my other laptops as well. Um, but it's pretty quiet. It's not too bad, not very noticeable. You've got stereo speakers, one, two down here. Sound isn't bad, could be louder, but whatever, it's, it's not bad. Um, so let me open this up, and you're going to see exactly what happens here when you first open it up. You get the um, display, and it just pops open. It's actually booting up right now because I've opened it up. It's ready to go for me to sign in with my Google account, and we're good. I mean, that's the boot. That's it. Um, it's a nice matte finish. I don't know if you can tell. Not keen on the viewing angles. It's not the best LCD that I've ever seen by far. Uh, but if you're working with the device right in front of you, it's perfectly fine. The up and down angles aren't so bad, but left and right, things get washed out and, and so on. Um, real quick, I can show you. There's an aluminum hand rest here. The rest is this is plastic, but the, the wrist rest is aluminum. You've got a generous sized trackpad, multi touch. Um, the keyboard is outstanding. It's chiclet keys and quite good. You've got special function keys at the top that work specifically for the browser and for the Chrome OS. And what else do we have? Just a microphone port. Oh, HD video cam up top there, and I used this several times over um, Google Talk and a bridged conversation with Google Talk to Skype, and callers uh, or people on the other end of the computer have said it looks fantastic, and I've enjoyed the uh, video chats I've had. So, all right, let's take a look at what this thing can actually do, and maybe I can explain why I've been having so much fun. Okay, I'm back here with the Chromebook. I have booted it up, but I'm going to show you how fast it shuts down and boots again. You'll see the screen, not so much the keys and the trackpad. The trackpad is a little loud for my taste, but uh, it's not terrible, and you can do touch to tap. So um, let me do this. I'm going to actually shut this down so you can see how fast this thing shuts down. It's done. That's it. Well, now it's done. That's all of maybe two seconds, at least as fast as my air, if not faster. So let me now turn it on. I just tap the button. This is as if I open up the screen, as I showed you earlier, it's booting. We're good to go. I sign in with my Google account.
and there we go. We're right back where I started. And of course it opens up a browser because at that point, that is the operating system. There we go. And now we've got what you could call Windows because what you do is you can just hit a button on the keyboard and go to full screen. You can, well, let's add another tab. I can see what the tabs are open on my other devices, my iMac, Nexus, Chromebook, the Air. Okay, let will just go to Tech Meme here. Good. I can break Tech Meme out into its own window on the side. I can do the same here. So you can have multiple windows and you can even resize these. So if you wanted to, you could just say have Twitter going on the right hand side and you know be working in a browser on the left hand side, for example. That's what I do often anyway. We also have these little shortcuts down below. Google Chrome, Gmail, YouTube, Google Search, the current tabs open, and then this handy little app launcher. I love this. It just, the whole browser disappears and now you've got all your apps, quote-unquote apps. So what we could do is uh, open up, oh, let's open up Netflix for a second. It's going to open up over here. I'm going to use my two-finger scrolling to go down. What can I, what can I watch real quick? Hey, the Patriot. I always like that. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put that one in full screen. There it goes. The Picture clarity usually takes a minute or two with Netflix, I find, but I'll turn the sound up so you can hear it. That's full sound. It's not quite clear yet in terms of the video streaming, but it should kick in in a second. As it pulls down and buffers, there it goes, just kicked in. Looks fantastic. What I'm gonna do though is I'm actually going to pause the movie and what we'll do is, let me exit full screen, pause that, actually we'll just close that tab. I will go to, we'll leave Tech Meme open, I will go to my Google Talk, so I was talking to my son earlier. Let's see if I can get, yeah, he's on. Let's do a voice chat with him, see what he's up to, probably no good. Whoops, not voice calling, I wanted to do the video calling. There we go, waiting for him to answer. We can expand this. Oh, yo, Dad. Yo! People watching this video. What's that? I said, yo, Dad, and people watching this video. That's right. What are you up to? Minecraft? Yes, how'd you know? Because you're always playing Minecraft. No, not. I'm playing League of Legends a lot, too. Uh, okay. What about, uh, how's the video quality? Um, pretty good. Yeah, do I look do I look tall? Wait, did you shave this morning? I did. Can you tell? I can. It's an HD video camera. That's why you can tell. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, listen, you're coming over this weekend. We're going to finish putting uh, R2D2 together, the Lego set. Yeah, and then we just have to like we have to teach him how to roll, how to move. How to move. Well, that's when we get like the NXT and the Arduino board and get geeking out. Cool. All that stuff. Yeah. All right. You go ahead. I'm going to play some more with this because I'm having too much fun. Okay. You All right. Do be good. All right. Bye, Dad. Bye. Well, there we go. I actually had a, a chat on Google Talk with Skype. Uh, it was bridged into Skype. It looked fantastic. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, some of the other things I found, I mean, you'd think this is very limiting because you don't have apps. I agree with that. That's a valid point. The trick is, you can't really replicate this on a regular laptop just by using Chrome. The reason being, you always have those apps to fall on, fall back onto. You have um, operating system native apps that you can use, and the operating system is doing so much more that maybe you don't need right then. When you take all of that out of the equation, it actually, I find, becomes fun to start finding things to do online. Like, I found this game. Uh, let's get rid of tech meme first. I'll leave it open just from a performance standpoint. Close Google Chat. I played this game earlier and it's like really good for a web game. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm surprised. Here it comes. It's going to preload about 41 meg here and that's probably why it looks so good in terms of not streaming. It's actually downloading some of the game information here. But I found it to be quite fun, and I never would have found it unless I had to look for it. I know that sounds terrible. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just explaining why I'm having so much fun with this. All right. I'm terrible at games that use the keyboard, so we won't be here too long. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. 
got the volume three quarters, 80% up. Let's go full screen. Super giant games. If you haven't played this, go online and, and you don't have to buy it or anything. It's just a web based game. Oops, skip for now. Turn that sound down. Story, normal mode. The game has excellent narration throughout. It's really kind of kind of fun. But again, we won't be here too long. I just want to show you what it looks like and how Chrome handles it. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock looks in Looks pretty sky. good. He gets up, sets off for the bastion. Where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. I'm using the keyboard here. Ground forms up under his feet as it point the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Doesn't that look pretty neat? Finds if I stop, it'll friend. stop building the walls. Just if I move, it will add. It's great. There's combat and so on. I can get the hammer here. Well, Very cartoony. Very cartoony, but fun. All right, we can close that down. That's all right, I'll leave this page. I don't need my progress there. Um, you know, hey, I want to listen to music. Well, I've got shortcuts to it, but I can also go in here to audio, and I could be streaming my music. It looks just like it does on the Mac. And we could hit play, but I'm sure you know it's going to work. It's pretty basic. There it goes, and I've got Enya playing. In the meantime, I mentioned my Mac. I'm going to go over and do one other thing. And that is, I'm actually going to connect to my Mac, Mac using Chrome, Chrome Remote Desktop. There's my Mac. I'm just going to put in the pin that I had set up previously. That's just for security. And boom, there you go. Let me bear with me one second. There's my Mac. There's my Mac. Now, granted, I'm over Wi Fi. I'd like to try this over 3G. I haven't done so yet. I'm going to full screen it. I'm going to say screen options, original size. Now I can actually read it. Two fingers scroll through my Echophone Twitter client. See what tweets are there. I won't say it's the fastest uh, remote client I've ever seen, but it's certainly usable. It's certainly usable. Every, all the heavy lifting is being done on the Mac and it's just showing up here now. Close tech meme. I was doing a running calculator earlier. I highly recommend Macmillan for those who are running. And then if I need to see more of the screen, I can do so like that. And you know, not bad, not bad, but quite a bit of fun. Anyway, there's so much more to this. I'm collecting a list of tips and tricks. Let's mute that. I'm collecting a list of tips and tricks, and I will have those out because I found some, some things you've got to work around. There's no question about it, but they're not as bad as I thought. For people who need heavy-duty computing and heavy-duty apps, no, a Chromebook is not for you. I'd never say it is. But for a large portion of people who use the web for browsing, for internet, for, I'm not for internet, for um, email, for some occasional game playing, social networking, this is great. I absolutely love it. I am having a blast with this. I live in a browser all day on my desktop and my laptop. So I can't use the apps that are on those devices here, but I find it very enlightening. I don't find I'm bothered with notifications. My iPhone just rang with a notification, but I'm not bothered by it here. I really, really like this setup. Not for everybody, but I'm enjoying it so far. And I'll have more in the future on this, so stay tuned.